so the polymer solvent interactions okay uh, uh, so it is what is known is that uh, the the conformation the polymer takes okay what you are looking at is two conformations okay in one case uh, uh, it is what is called as a uh, expanded you know configuration is more like a collapse right configuration. So, whether the polymer is in this state or in this state in a solution depends on the the polymer solvent interaction okay. Uh, in a in a crude sense uh, you can say that uh, okay if the the interaction okay the intermolecular interaction between the polymer chain okay and the solvent okay depending upon if the energy associated with this interaction is you know either positive or negative depending upon that okay it will either take this configuration or it will take this configuration okay. Uh, people typically something called something called as a good solvent okay and a, a poor solvent or a, a bad solvent okay. So, in, in, in the case of good solvent the interaction between the polymer segments and the solvent molecules are energetically favorable okay and therefore, it will cause the polymer coil to expand okay. On the other hand when some polymers are put in a solvent what are called as poor solvents the polymer polymer self interactions are preferred okay. The polymer would like to be in contact with its own molecule rather than being in contact with the fluid okay. Therefore, the polymer coils and it will contract or it will you know it will it will it will it will collapse okay. And uh, uh, of course, the the quality of the solvent that means you know whether the solvent is good solvent or bad solvent depends on the the chemical composition of the polymer and the solvent okay and also the the solution temperature as well okay. Uh, if you look at uh, peop when people study uh, polystyrene uh, polymer okay uh, the good solvent for polystyrene is uh, uh, THF you know uh, you know uh, 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 and then if you look at like say PVA okay polyvinyl alcohol uh, a good solvent for PVA is water right okay. Uh, and at the same time if I take this uh, you know uh, poly polystyrene if I put in water it will collapse okay the you know the water is a, a poor solvent for uh, um, polystyrene okay. So, depending upon the the composition of the polymer and the solvent and the solution temperature the polymers can either take this configuration and this configuration right. Now, if it takes this configuration if I am working with like say the particles of certain size okay if the particle size is same in both the cases okay now you can as you can imagine your q is going to be different right because q is the, the size of the polymer divided by the size of the particle okay now if the polymer is in expanded state okay it will be more likely that you know if for a if the particle is very small it could be a protein limit okay however in this case you know if uh, of course i have drawn very small particle you know if i take a particle like that right so you know if i have a case where you know the your rg by r could be less than 1 right. So, therefore, the polymer solvent interactions um, become important both in terms of deciding on you know maybe which regime you are in in terms of the uh, the size uh, particle size to polymer ratio and of course, it will also influence you know the uh, uh, you know the other uh, kind of um, interaction in the system. Now, um, <coughs> So, these are two um, uh, phase diagrams okay. Uh, uh, this is for um, uh, cases where q is large. So, this is a state diagram for a, a colloid polymer mixture uh, for large q uh, when I say large q this is going to be the protein limit right q large q is is for the, the protein limit that means q is you know r g by r okay this is um, uh, you know it is much uh, you know larger than 1 okay or larger than 1 okay and what is drawn here is uh, uh, phi p that is is the volume fraction of the polymer in the in the uh, solution and phi which is the the volume fraction of particles in the solution okay and uh, again we we mentioned this right 
So you could typically when the concentration of the polymer is very low, okay, state like this, right? If I take a point like this, the concentration of the particle is low and the concentration of the particle both the polymer and the particles are low, you know, you will you know expect you know the state of the you know mixture going to be fluid like. However, if I am at you know appreciable concentration of polymer and particles, you could have a, a gas um, liquid kind of coexistence and if I again go to um, higher concentration of particle in the polymer, I could have a gel like system. So, therefore, this kind of gives you you know depending upon uh, it is not a I mean uh, you know what you can do uh, what has been done here is <coughs> people have done experiments with a, a variety of polymer colloid mixtures okay? and uh, you know you can think about the different phases that come about you know when you work with colloid polymer mixture can be broadly classified into these uh, you know states and it will tell you what is the typical concentration that which you know each of these uh, phases may come about. So, that is for the, the large Q uh, case and uh, this is for a, a small Q case okay, where you know this uh, uh, Q that is R G by R okay, is uh, smaller than 1. Again the same similar plot okay, phi p versus phi okay. and uh, so again there is a, a range of at a particular you know the par polymer particle concentration you have a a gel like behavior okay and then you could have a case where you know it could be a dense gel it is uh, a space spanning network but with more concentration of particles maybe it will have a higher modulus compared to uh, these gels right and uh, of course at sufficiently high concentration of particles you can have uh, glasses crystals or repulsive glasses and things like that okay so this is basically give you a, a broad picture of you know what are the <coughs> the different states that people observe in uh, uh, colloid polymer mixtures. Okay. Um, any, any questions so far <coughs> before we go further? Okay, so yeah, go ahead. Phase separation, any experiment technique that you can use? Um, a phase separation, any experimental technique that you can use it for? Okay, one simple would be a just a I mean first of course is a visual observation that is it right that is the simplest one that you can think of. Um, what people yeah yeah. But experimentally to observe the phase four. Um, see there are a lot of I mean of course one could be that you know you can um, uh, uh, microscopy could be a good technique okay you can take you can start with the uh, you know one fluid system and you may basically take a small sample uh, sandwich them between two plates put in a microscope and then keep observing okay you record uh, you know that is one way to look at. Um, uh, I mean uh, people have kind of looked at onset of phase separation by light scattering as well mm -hmm. you know you can uh, you know depending upon whether the whether the if, if I if I take two fluid mixtures okay say that um, these fluids are miscible at a particular temperature and then if you just heat it up they become you know they demix okay they become two I individual phases as you do a temperature you know either heating or cooling cycle i can put a small sample and i can i can shine a beam of light i can look at you know what will happen to the the scattered intensity okay there are other there are ways by which you can you know extract out phase separation by experiment like that okay uh, i would say these are the two techniques you know that comes to my mind at this point <coughs> Okay, so this is a um, um, kind of picture which tells you um, uh, what will happen, what are the different uh, uh, mechanisms that people have proposed okay, in order to understand uh, what happens to uh, a dispersion of colloids okay, um, when you add polymers to them. Um, so, the addition of polymer uh, to a dispersion um, can promote stability okay, or it can also destabilize the dispersion both is possible. Okay. Uh, that means, I have a dispersion which is inherently not stable I add polymer it can become stable okay, 
or I could have a dispersion which is already stable, then I add polymer it becomes you know unstable, okay. It can be destabilized, okay, and that uh, depends on okay the nature of interaction between the polymer and the solvent, okay, and between the, the polymer and the dispersed particles, okay. It depends on a lot of factors that I mentioned, right. Okay, we listed several parameters, right? It depends on all of that, okay. Um, so, a, a other way to think about this problem would be you know what is also important is the polymer solution thermodynamics, okay. That is when you know the conformation of the polymer, you know whether it is in a coil state, expanded state, all of that beco becomes picture, you know important. Also, you should also worry about you know the typical interactions that exist between you know the different components that you have in the um, solution. <coughs> so, uh, uh, typically when the concentration of the polymer is low, okay, typically when the concentration of the polymer is low, people have observed what is called as a, a bridging flocculation, okay. Uh, this will happen in cases where uh, the polymer could adsorb on the surface of the particle, okay. I have two particles in the solution, I add a polymer, okay, one end of the polymer gets attached to the you know on the surface, the other end kind of attaches to the, the other you know the polymer, right, okay. So, therefore, there is a, a bridging, okay and and when, when many such you know particles and polymers come together, okay, you could have, okay, this you could have. Uh, uh, bridging flocculation, okay, and and this typically happens in cases where the polymers are adsorbing, okay. That's one of the requirement for the bridging to occur, okay. If the if the uh, if the adsorption does not occur, then the polymer continues to be in the solution, okay, and continues to be in the solution as maybe individual molecules. Therefore the bridging will not be a possibility, okay. So, at um, certain concentration, uh, people have seen what is called a, a steric stabilization, okay. In which case what will happen is the polymer <coughs> that are added, it adsorbs onto the polymer, okay, and it forms brush like layers, okay, which is depicted here, right. It forms brush like layers and these brushes can extend over sufficiently long distance, okay. When I mean by what I mean by the sufficiently long distance, so we said that the Van der Waals force of attractions you know can be operative almost up to about 10 nanometer, okay. Now, if you somehow make sure that the particles never approach a distance which is less than 10 nanometer, then you know you can actually get rid of the influence of Van der Waals forces, okay. What these brush like layer do, okay, they extend you know they basically mask the influence of Van der Waals force of attraction and therefore, they can impart stability to the dispersion, okay. And this mechanism is what is called as a, a steric uh, stabilization. Okay, people also call, call it what is called as a, a steric hindrance. Okay, so <coughs> so for for steric stabilization, okay, one of the two things should happen: either the polymer molecules must adsorb, okay, on the particle surface, or they can be anchored on the particle surface. That means, in what, what you are seeing is an example where the polymer is adsorbed onto the, onto the particle surface. I could have a case where I could have a particle and these polymer molecules are covalently bond, bonded onto the surface, both in this case and this case you will have steric stabilization, 